What's up, guys? It's Larry Hagner with the Good Dad Project Podcast, and you are listening to We Rad Dads with Walter Eggers. Enjoy. We Rad Dads, bringing a soft edge to a hard topic. Join us every week as we talk to real people with real stories from the everyday single parent to family professionals and find entertainment along the way. Join me, Walter J. Eggers, as I discover and share wisdom. Positive changes start here. All right, I don't see any comments, but it says I'm live. So I'm just gonna move forward. Guys, Oh, I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, threatening. I've been threatening to do this for a while where I would do the live intro, uh, live on the, we rad dads, Facebook group, and also do the live recording, which is what's happening. Why the, why the microphone, uh, for the show itself. And it's something I've been holding off for a long, long time. So welcome rad dads. Uh, I'm going to make this short and sweet, whether or not anyone joins us here, uh, and if you do, I'll just shout you out. I want to make this kind of a, a normal thing, but this is the first time I've been trying this. So, guys, I have been hanging on. I have, oh man, it's been a last year. As you know, it's been a, it's been a crazy year for me, and I'm sure the same is for you. Uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, guys, you've heard me tease this out several times over, and uh, I've been hanging on to this one episode for a couple of reasons, and I'll get to that in the outro. After the episode, I'll explain why I hung on to it for so long, but suffice it to say that I recognize some things that I wasn't in love with, and uh, as much, and, and, and this is on my end, it's not the guest, uh, this week's guest, uh, <laughs> from last year, actually, is Ryan Hamilton joins us from the Life of Dad podcast. And Ryan has been going through the thick and thin of it and uh, hasn't slowed down any. Ryan's life has changed uh, again here recently, uh, recent as of today, not recent as of this recording. As I mentioned, this recording was done about a year ago, uh, and I've been hanging on to it since. And uh, oh, man, I'm going to get into that in, in after the episode. I'm going to do a little outro. But for now, I want you to enjoy what we talked about and and everything that Ryan has gone through to this point. Like, we are not alone. Guys, all of us are going through our things. In the last year, Ryan has gone through uh, immense change as well, as have I. And just today, this the latest Facebook Live video from Andy Nelson uh, tells us again, like, you know, he's gone through it too. I've watched, I've watched Andy from the point of our interview to the, now where he's posting in the We Rad Dads group. Uh, it's, it's an amazing transformation to see, to hear, to, to, to just be part of that transformation in him and see it and know that it can happen. And, and he's come such a long way. I think we all have in the last year, uh, in becoming just better people, uh, much less better dads. Guys, I don't want to take too much of your time here before the episode, but again, this is simulcast. Not only are you watching this live for those of you in the We Rad Dads Facebook group, uh, but those of you hearing this will have your chance. If you want to join me on a live video rec- or video, I guess, yeah, video recording, uh, then transcribe to the audio for the podcast itself. Head on over to the We Rad Dads Facebook group. All right. Here's the thing. I'm getting requests and that's great. I love having people in the group, but there's a barrier to entry. I don't just let everyone in. I've instituted a a question. And if you can't, don't, or won't answer the question I ask, which is very simply, why do you want to be in the We Rad Dads Facebook group, right? Give me a legitimate answer. Don't just say because I'm rad. All right. That that's probably true, but I need, I need something a little more substantial, right? Uh, I'm a single dad looking for help and advice. Uh, I don't know where else to turn. I'm just want to, I want to better my relationship with my, my stepchildren's other parents, I, whatever it is. Like it's, this is, this is what that's for. And it helps me separate the people who are just group collecting and those people who are actually going to add value to us, all of us in the We Are Ad Dads Facebook group. So go on over there, answer that question and I'll let you in. That's it. I mean, that's all there is to it. So you can be part of this live intro guys the other half that i wanted to mention 
we are all seeking tools and we are all seeking different ways of bettering ourselves. And one of the man, time and two, try time and true tested methods of gaining wisdom, insight, and uh, introspection are books. But man, if you're like me, I, I don't have time. I don't have time to read books. And I have been trying to force that. In fact, I'll do a whole nother show here soon on my morning routines. Uh, I've been really working on them the last literal two years now. And I am just now kind of getting to the tip of the iceberg on what's working and what isn't. But I mean, you want to talk about <laughs> just trying everything in every direction. I, I've tried a lot of things. I haven't tried it all, but I've tried a lot of things and it's, it's hard to make it stick. Guys, back to the point. Books, right? Books are full of all kinds of interesting information and, and it's so, I'm going to say it, it's just inconvenient. I'm not a reader. I'm just not a reader. But if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, chances are you're a listener just like me. And I want to encourage you to support the We Rad Dads podcast group show, uh, all of it by, by subscribing on Audible. I have an Audible affiliate link, and I would appreciate if you guys would join me. Uh, and and if, if if getting audiobooks uh, to your device for a monthly subscription is your jam, then head on over to audibletrial.com slash weraddads. That's my affiliate link. That means uh, when you subscribe, I get a very small portion of that that would normally go to Audible. Uh, or Amazon in this case. That's the that's the parent company. So guys, support the show and support yourselves at the same time. Audibletrial.com slash we rad dads. I would appreciate it. Guys, without further ado, my interview with Ryan Hamilton a whole year ago. Enjoy. Hello and welcome back again, Rad Dads, Walter Eggers. Steady like a rock uh, coming at you today with a special guest from another really awesome men's resource, uh, the Life of Dad podcast, a very integral member, Ryan Hamilton joins us today. Ryan, how are you today? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm fantastic. You know, I'm just uh, living the dream, pushing that ball forward. <laughs> I feel you, man. Yeah. I, I, like you said at the top, man, steady like a rock. Yeah. Dude, I feel it, man. You, have you to gotta be. be. Sometimes you gotta maybe, be. You know, if you're, if you're not, if Go for it. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes, you know, I feel like a, there's a little gelatin in the center, but yeah, on the outside, I got to be a rock, you know? <laughs> Look, there, there's there's there, there are too many tumultuous things happening around me to not be steady like a rock, man. It's yeah. all about, you know, kind of equanimity and composure and, and just trying to keep my cool amidst, you know, just the the wild, wild uh, roller coaster in the maelstrom of life, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, well said. Oh my <laughs> it's, gosh. It's, it's awful nice to talk to another podcaster. You know, words are, they, they flow really easily and eloquently. I try, man. It's like poetry. It's like poetry in I, your ears. <laughs> dude, I try. I'm the only one who lives this life that I live. And uh, yeah, it's 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 been a monster, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Yeah. I yeah, can't, uh, can't wait to get into that story a little bit here. But let's get to know you a little bit more. Uh, you are the chief technical dude of the Life of Dad podcast. You are a entrepreneur, a rock star coder, uh, app developer, podcaster, speaker, tech geek, self, self-proclaimed, marketing dude, investor, wine enthusiast, philanthropist and uh very last but least it says here you're a human being as well <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah so, some, some, sometimes i'm uh you know i gallivant around this world try to be a human you know so yeah. but yeah everything else you mentioned yeah you know um just you know just a tech geek man a yeah. coder i've been coding all my life and uh it's a true passion of mine and you know it's it's been interesting to see um, you know, I, I, look, I started coding back when I was in elementary school Wow! and, uh, my gosh, fast forward, you know, almost like th three decades later, you know, I'm still rocking out doing the same <laughs> kind of, you know, geeky things that I was doing back when I was in second grade. But, um, you know, just, just honored and privileged to be able to bring, you know, my, my talents and skills to, to the world and to, you know, affect the world of fatherhood in a positive way, affect parents in a, in a, in a good positive way. And just try to be a, um, like I said, a, just a good solid human being, right? You steady like a rock, you know, yeah. and it's the maelstrom and the roller coaster of life, you know? Well, um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing and, and, and bringing that to us. Cause I mean, you have been through quite a struggle in your fatherhood, uh, uh, uh 
journey at this point. And I did neglect yes. to mention highest of all achievements is that you have a 10 year old son at this point and uh, you are uh, somewhat recently divorced. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I've got a great 10 year old son named Isaiah and uh, you know, he's on the verge of going to middle school next year. So uh, wow. you can imagine that's a, you know, a, another transition that requires, you know, plenty of attention and, and uh uh, you know, ha- handle with care, right? Yeah. You know, he's 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 flourishing into an ad- adolescent boy, and you know, starting to think about girls and you know, a, a new level of schooling that's going to require more of him. Um, yeah. You know, he has autism and ADHD, so oh wow. Um, so so this time in his life is is kind of filled with um, a lot of you know e- expectation and and curiosity and wonder and. You know, looking at his future, you know, all of us, you know, both, you know, myself and his mother and, and you know, also himself kind of looking toward next year and beyond and saying like, hey, you know, I'm excited about this, but also a little bit apprehensive. And, you know, what, what's tomorrow going to bring? Yeah. And uh, just doing our best to prepare for all of it. And uh, yeah, he's, he's just a great kid. Really good kid. That's awesome. Yeah. And that, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's the point. That's the point as I figured out in life is just like for me, you know, once, once I became a dad, it's just like, oh, I get it now. This is why I'm here. I get it. Okay. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then closely after that, it was like, oh crap, I, I, I don't know anything about this. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, well, I guess, you know, we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. And so, yeah, it's all new. It's all kind of, you got that apprehension about the next and, and yep. we just, you know, do it the best we can to, uh, to prepare and, and ourselves and others for that as well. So, and, and here we are case in point, you know, talking to an audience of folks who more or less have the same questions. Absolutely. All, you know, all we can do is our best. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, I've vowed in my life, you know, if, if I know within my heart, my mind, my body that I've given my all done my best, everything else is just like, let the chips fall where they may, you know, yeah. <laughs> like I can't really don't have too much control over that. So, uh, life's going to bring what it's going to bring, but I, you know, kind of do my best to <laughs> be steady like a rock in the maelstrom and the roller coaster of life. Yeah. yeah. That's just a common theme on this, this podcast, it seems right. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, yeah. that's uh, you brought up a really uh, key point too is just uh you know man the maelstrom the maelstrom of life yep. it's just mm-hmm. this weathering process and you know if we're going to take it back to rocks and 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 that sort of thing mm-hmm. the grand canyon was was formed by a bunch of different forces one of which is is wind is what they tell me and i'm not i'm mm-hmm. no scientist but uh, i mean sure. look look at what time uh, and and the appropriate amount of effort and and, and hmm. that has produced this amazing uh what is it it's a wonder of the world i believe yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, and 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 it just yeah. it took time, and it wasn't probably wasn't something that you know people saw coming, and all of a sudden you realize like, oh, this it's created this beautiful thing. So I mean, the males hmm. from a life, yes, uh, it, it it is very tumultuous going through that, but I think hmm. what takes shape because of it is is truly amazing. So you know, <laughs> I, I, not just to you, but to the listeners out there, guys. I trust me, I understand the struggle. Ryan and I both understand the struggle, but uh, you mm-hmm. know, keep at it as long as you don't give up and and do your best. Like you were saying, all you can do is your best. You know, if you apply your best, then uh, it, it it'll work out. One way Absolutely. or the next, just stay at it. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I like the the little ge- geological, you know, <laughs> bit that we we kind of like added to the show here. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you're right though. You know, these little, you know, day by day, day in day out, little incremental improvements. You know, be it you know wind or you know, the the you know the flowing winds and the just the the events in our lives, just tempering that stone, man. Yeah. Tempering it over yeah. time, just becoming, you know, more polished and clearer and better over time, man. You know, that's all we can hope for. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, uh, hey, Ryan, maybe I left something out in there, um, but I know you were talking about coding and and that being your life. How is that? Mm-hmm. How has that led to where you are right now? How? Um, I, how tell it tell us a lot about just like who you are this day and then we'll go a little bit further into the podcast we'll go we'll go back and kind of go do the, <laughs> the prequel thing you know if you will yeah 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 sure so to so this particular day you know uh you know any or any given kind of weekday or you know work day of my life um you know can find me by day coding you know programming uh for mobile devices you know i work in the um advertising industry by day, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, building kind of location based, uh, mobile 
advertising for kind of big brand national clients. I mean, you name the big brand, you know, chances are probably, you know, uh, write the code that, you know, makes it come to life on, on say your smartphone or your tablet. You Interesting. Know? So that's like, is, uh, that, is that geofencing? Oh yes, yeah, plenty of you know, geo, you know, dropping terminology on the show. Yeah, right, absolutely. I'm, geo, ge, like geolocation, you yeah. know, a lot of you know, kind of. So if you can imagine, you know, people out there in the world living their lives, carrying smartphones, carrying their tablets around, whatever device devices they have got, you know, um, you know, we're able to kind of like know the the location of them, and you know, the advertisers, the retailers of the world, you know, want foot traffic in their stores and, you know, certainly want people to purchase, you know, the goods and services that they have to offer and the, the you know, things that they're manufacturing, distributing out to the kind of wholesales of the retailers of the world. So, um, so, you know, you can imagine kind of any brand that you would see kind of advertising nationally on, you know, say like, you know, whatever your TV or your billboard or, you know, whatever other medium, uh, we build as part of those kind of national ad campaigns uh, the mobile component of them. So, uh, in, in in particular, the the location based mobile component of them. So, I mean, you take you know a company like Starbucks, um, you know, tens of thousands of uh, you know kind of retail shops um, across the nation, across the globe. You know, they want people to visit their store and buy coffee, yeah. <laughs> spend some time at their shop. Yeah. And so, you know, I write the code to you know kind of. Uh, you know, put those, you know, kind of advertising experience on smartphones to, you know, ultimately kind of get people intimately involved with the brand and into, you know, uh, hopefully drive foot traffic into actual stores. Uh, so, so that's in a nutshell, kind of what I do by day. And then, you know, everything else is, um, you know, I run a social network and entertainment destination for fathers, uh, called life of dad. And we've been operating that for about, you know, six, seven years, uh, started off in a hospital room, you know, humble beginnings, you know, uh, from a hospital room and, and in my case, uh, you know, kind of foreclosed on garage and, and, uh, you know, we've just been kind of rocking out and building it day in, day out. And, um, you know, six, seven years later, you know, we've, we've grown to, you know, touch millions across the planet with it. And then other than that, you know, like you said earlier, I'm a father to a, a great 10 year old, uh, son named Isaiah. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> I'm a coder. I'm a, you know, work in the advertising biz and run a social network. And at the end of the day and the beginning of the day, I'm a dad. So, yeah, um, well, it's, that's pretty much in a nutshell, you know, a you typical have, day of my life. I don't know how you do that. You have so many avenues. You have so many irons in the fire. And then, you know, single dad on top of that, you know, co-parent sure. on top of that. It's just that, that mm -hmm. is such a demanding life. So, you know, I really wanted to... to offer you kudos and and congratulations on that because that is no small feat in itself you know i i don't Appreciate know about it. you but I, I i struggle on the rig you know just <laughs> you i know, struggle like, i struggle very much on the rig man you know? like, i think that's, I'm, that's, I'm, that's like, I, I revel in the struggle man yeah. <laughs> my life is fine by struggle that's yeah for sure i think it's important yeah. to talk about that because a lot of people don't say oh like oh yeah well, it's difficult it's hard I mean, and, and it's hard to say that without sounding like you're whining about it too but the reality is literally everybody in every situation you know if you're a co-parent if you're happily married if you're you know without kids you're struggling in some way you're struggling yeah. you know so that's i that's think kind of the um, norm. I think in my life, you know, what I've found in the struggle is um, kind of a sense of my own humanity. You know, again, like I, you know, at the at the end of the day, everything you know, from the beginning of the day, every point in between, you know, I'm a human being. And, you know, when you look at the word human, it's like, you know, there's, there's humility in there. You know, we come from the earth and um, it's it's kind of a very kind of down to earth um thing that I found in my life is, you know, you got to stay humble. Yeah. You know, and, and in so doing, um, you know, that is the strength, you know, when I look at, um, you know, we've been talking about struggle. Um, you know, when you look, my gosh, we really, really well, we, we, we always kind of going to take it back to geology on the show, it seems, but you know, look at, look at the earth. Yeah. It's dirt. You know, when you look at dirt, it gets trampled upon. You know, and when you look at, you know, things that are down to earth, yeah, people stomp on it. You know, it, it probably gets treated the worst out of any of the ele elements of this world, you know. So, yeah. um, so I think humility is what I found. You know, that struggle, um, kind of being trampled in the dirt and kind of going through the, the painful and um, somewhat um, tough, horrendous things that I've gone through, 
yeah, just like you said, it's, it's, it, 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 you know, it polishes the stone, you know, it, it humbles us. It, it makes us better. And, you know, where else can you go from there? But, but kind of up and great things spring forth from, from that kind of fertile soil, you know, yeah. uh, from, from humility comes great, beautiful things. And, and I would like to think that, you know, um, you know, a lot of the productivity, a lot of the creativity, a lot of the kind of insight and the wisdom and, 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 uh, and the things that I've done in my life has come from a very kind of humble down to earth place. And, uh, the struggle, uh, has, has given birth to a lot of that. So I, again, like I said, I revel in the struggle. I'm, I'm really appreciative to have gone through a lot of the, the kind of painful, tough things in my life. Um, look, cause life's not easy. And no. you know, if, if it was, then I think, uh, you know, a lot of the beauty and, and magical things, you know, kind of wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to, <laughs> to exist, to, to even come to fruition. Yeah, totally, totally agree there. Uh, and yeah, you, you kind of hit it, you know, you can, those, those struggle being the stomp dirt, if you will, can, can manifest amazing things. If, mm. if given the right, you know, additives, the nutrients, if you give it the right water, if you give it, you know, a little bit of fertilizer, maybe you put, you plant the right seeds there, something mm-hmm. amazing can happen, you know, and that's obviously metaphorical, but the mm-hmm. humility, uh, the, the understanding that, you know, yeah, this, this is, this is how it goes, you know, and you got to yeah. keep working at it and eventually we can get back on track. I know we've, we've kind of covered this one and, uh, I just, it kind of ties into the next little question here, but uh, can you you summarize your current outlook in a quote or proverb or mantra? Like what is it that is quintessentially you? Do you have a, something that you can grab onto real quick? Uh, yeah. Be a beacon of love and excellence and spread it around the galaxy, man. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell, just wanting to humbly affect humanity in the world. And, you know, the very universe in a positive way, just be a beacon of love and excellence and spread it everywhere you can, you know, um, share it with whomever you interact with. I'm sharing it here on the podcast. Hopefully share it with my family, share it with my friends, um, you know, share it with strangers. You know, the world needs a lot of, you know, love and excellence right now. And, uh, you know, what, what else can I say? <laughs> you know, that is, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for it's tough to say this word with talking with two guys, but yeah, that's beautiful, man. I mean, <laughs> appreciate it. No, yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, we need more of that. And that's the thing. Like, uh, how how do you go from you know the ruination, the stomp dirt, the the, the smashed, burnt earth, the scorched, uh, you know, this, that, and the other thing, to having that that beacon of love? Because like that that in itself is a journey, and that's what I want to unpack here, as far as when it comes to being a dad. Uh, so. Yeah. Let's let's dive into it, man. Uh, let's let's talk about your bomb crater, if you will. Um, and that you know <laughs> yeah. that's that's the term that I use, and it's it's you know your life literally just blows up, and you're just you're standing in this bomb crater. All of a sudden, you wake up, and you're like, oh, I can't see. I'm in a hole. Like my life is just kind of here. So, yeah. so tell us tell us about that point, and then of course draw that tie together to where you are now, where you're a beacon of uh, love and excellence. Yeah. So I mean, if I look back on. Um, what created that, that bomb crater kind of the, the rough issues and, and the struggle that I went through in my life was, um, probably due to a, you know, a rough relationship with the, uh, the mother of my child, um, you know, my ex-wife and, you know, we, we, we had a rough go and I think at a relationship, um, and, you know, to put, you know, some kind of time relevance in there and, and to kind of give people their, you know, your listeners a little bit of bearing on kind of like when, uh, you know, the stuff hit the fan and in, in my marital relationship, I mean, you're looking at, you know, kind of 2006 is when our son was born. And, you know, soon after that, you know, (laughs) iPhones and, you know, a lot of the mobile things that kind of currently define my career were coming out. Um, back then I was working in the nonprofit field as a coder, as a marketing guy, um, and enjoyed, you know, somewhat of a good career. Um, but as you know, like, you know, around 2007, 2008, you know, uh, you know, there's a huge financial collapses start to happen in the world. And, uh, so, so it, it was almost like a perfect storm, you know, both kind of world situations and kind of like internal kind of family situations, all coming to a head all at the same time. So, yeah. you know, I was going through a separation and divorce in, in my marriage 
at the same exact time that, you know, the economy was collapsing at the same exact time that I was, you know, getting laid off from, you know, my non nonprofit, you know, professional kind of marketing position. Uh, and so, so, I mean, I, soon, like around that time was, you know, my wife was moving out. She took our son, kind of moved on, you know, across the country and wow. you know, kind of took him out of my life. And, and, you know, then I lost my job and then, you know, you know, our, our house, you know, you know, slid in the foreclosure and just like financial collapses were starting to happen all around us. And, uh, and it was a depressing time, <laughs> you know, just I didn't know what to do. Least. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so like if, you know, and, 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 and then also I just, I slid into a depression. And, that, and, and that's the natural next step usually. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And so, and, and it was a depression that was deep. I mean, I, 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 lo- I would look at my, my existence and I was losing everything around me, not only materially, but, you know, kind of familially, like, I, you know, my family members, you know, my loved ones were just all just like, where are, where's everything that I, I, I worked hard, uh, for up until this point, you know, yeah. I, I bust my butt in my twenties to kind of build a career and to build a good family life. And just like, what has just happened? I've lost it all. Yeah. Um, so really depressed, like slid into a deep depression, um, eating a bunch of junk food, you know, drinking whiskey, drinking beer and, you know, you know, kind of, I don't know, collecting unemployment, you know, gambling my life away. And, and I was on the, you know, kind of the brink of suicide at, at the lowest point of my life. Wow. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, I guess you know, kind of what I was talking about earlier, like when you hit rock bottom and when you like so trampled down in the dirt, it's like I started like from rock bottom. I felt like, look, either I'm going to call it quits on life or like do something better than what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Like, and, and, and so I guess life and all of the goodness and the beauty and the magnificent things that, you know, not only have I seen, but that have, you know, helped to build in the past, like six, seven years since that low point has been because of, um, it, it was a, a good, healthy alternative to suicide. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, no, I mean, like, like no. I, look, I, I just, you know, don't want to, you know, kind of mince words with your audience. I just want to be completely honest. Like it was either killing myself or doing something better. Wow. And, uh, the past decade has just kind of been, yeah, me not calling quits on life and uh, being lucky to have um, found, <laughs> you know, I also kind of mentioned, you know, this was about the same time that, um, you know, uh, my my co, um, uh, co-founders in Life of Dad actually approached me and pitched the Life of Dad idea to me. Uh, see, back at the time, I was actually a venture developer. iPhone had just come along. Everybody and their grandma thought they had the next, like, greatest venture pitch and <laughs> venture idea. It's yeah. so, like, if you can imagine, like, any kind of app idea or venture idea, I've pretty much seen it all in terms of, like, venture pitches. Wow. Um, and uh, the original founder of uh, Life of Dad, Tommy Riles, uh, who's the guy that does warm up for the Ellen DeGeneres show, um, uh, comedian, awesome, really, really good guy. Uh he and my good friend, uh, old camp buddy of mine from back in St. Louis, uh, named David Guest, uh, Tommy and David were building Life of Dad, um, you know, kind of around that time. And they approached me. They knew I was a kind of a, a, a coder and developer. And um, at the time, Life of Dad was just, you know, like a plain vanilla WordPress blog. And, and mm-hmm. they approached me with the idea. And they're like, yeah, you know, we, we're, we've been blogging about fatherhood. We got these you know, these fatherhood videos out. Hey, check it out. We were thinking about making a social network out of it. And so they approached me with the idea and I thought it was, um, really kind of ridiculous. I didn't <laughs> never heard of dad <laughs> blogging and yeah, I didn't really know that fathers were like, you know, sharing their emotions and their stories on the internet. Um, so I thought it was crazy. I was like, what, uh, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> I yeah. thought it was just like another picture pitch and the crazy idea. Um, but the more I got to understand about, um, Really, why Life of Dad uh, was founded, um, it really kind of drew me in. I started to look at my life as a father and, and say, wow, there's, huh, there's really a good idea here. There's really like something here. Like fathers should 
the fathers of any facet, you know, any kind of walk of life should be able to, you know, know that there's a community of dads out there that they've got their back yes. and that, you know, feel like they're not alone in the struggle. Absolutely. Because um, quite frankly, like I was about to kill myself because I felt like, you know, I was all alone, depressed, like I didn't know I had anyone, you know, who really care around me. Um, so, yeah, Life of Dad was literally like a inadvertent lifesaver. It, yeah. You know, at the beginning, it's just like another venture pitch, another venture idea. But it, it, my God, seven years later, it's one of the greatest things I've got going. Um, but the original story, Tommy originally founded Life of Dad as a personal story. Like he and his wife were going through a high risk pregnancy mm. with their first child. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he and his wife, you know, they, they were, his wife was kind of mid pregnancy and the doctors kind of came to them and said like, look, you're, um, you know, we don't know about the health of, of your child there. Um, she's got a heart condition, you know, and so they suspected some, you know, congenital heart defects were at play. And so Tommy Riles started Life of Dad off as like a personal WordPress blog, um, just kind of to keep his family and close friends updated on the the status of a high risk pregnancy. Yeah, it was literally nothing other than just like sharing stories stories with family, and and one humble father's attempt to just like kind of reach out and and share share little quick quick blog posts and quick stories and like hey what's what's going on in the hospital room <laughs> with a uh, kind of handful of people and uh you know to this day I kind of look look back on you know what we've enabled you know life of dad to be for for thousands if not millions of other dads across the planet is the same exact thing just you know um a way that a dad can share uh his story with the world um and so Kind of what started off in a hospital room with very humble beginnings is, um, my gosh, through blood, sweat, and tears and uh, a whole lot of struggle, kind of inadvertently kind of touched millions across the planet. And uh, very proud of that. Glad uh, glad uh, I didn't call it quits on life. Yeah. You know, that's for sure. Well, you had the absolute opposite effect. I mean, you, you took essentially, knowingly or not, a path where you took your struggles and you bound yourself together with or, or you know, had the chance encounter with other men who, who were enduring struggles, uh, maybe not similar, but it, it dad struggles. And you guys, you guys built something huge uh, to help men who are also thinking about calling it quits or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the, the unsurmountable situation and give them a voice, give them a place, give them that, sure. that tribe and that brotherhood. And that is. You know, that is something that I struggled with and I, I, you know, to some degree, yeah, I mean, I still, I still do. I still feel like, you know, I'm, I'm an isolated case and this, that, and the other thing. And that's, that's, you know, that's a pity party attitude, <laughs> but sure, the, sure. the bottom line is, uh, if you get out there and you actually open up to other people, you can, you, you find out that you're not alone. Maybe not, maybe not in that exact situation, but you're not the only one with worries and struggles. And mm. it sounded like you guys needed each other and you found each other right at the right time. And we're able to yeah. to get it out there in a way that other men were, you know, they needed to hear it. You know, no question in my mind that men need to hear these sort of things, these mm -hmm. uh, vulnerable lessons and, you know, being open and then sharing those things. And that's what I've seen it you know, when I visit Life of Dad. It's just like just a bunch of people trying to help each other out. And, mm -hmm. man, if we had more of that, if I, you know, that is the that's that's the sweet spot, so to speak, of humanity. And mm -hmm. uh, there's something about it, you know, when you get in the man cave with other guys and you actually yep. put down that facade of like, oh, hey, you know, I'm the toughest guy ever and I have no problems or whatever. And you start sharing mm -hmm. those things with trusted people, mind you, with trusted yes. people like that is that is a truly magical, like relational moment. That's where you get to know people on intimate levels and build friendships and partnerships that are ironclad. Mm hmm. It's it's an amazing oh, uh, thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it came along at the right time in my life when I, I didn't even know what I didn't know. Like, you know, right. I, you know, I didn't even really, you know, again, it just hindsight is so 2020, man. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I you know, as much as we wanted, you know, we humbly just built life a dad uh, to be we, we I guess we always kind of set the vision out to, yeah, we wanted you know, any father to 
you know, have the potential to have a platform in a venue to connect with other dads and to share their story with the world. Um, and I think we just, we, we, we focused on that. We still focus on that. We, that's always been our core. And I think it's kind of from that kind of pure core foundation that, um, it has become kind of what it's become. Like we, we haven't really kind of in terms of our mission and our focus, like wavered too much from that, that, that center. And, uh, that's, that's what I'm really excited and proud about. Um, you know, even to this day, like, look, we, we touch millions weekly. Like we, we see the numbers, but I think a a lot of the qualitative feedback and, you know, just the, the comments and, um, you know, you know, the, 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 the private messages that we get from members of our community. Um, I think it's just, it's very heartening because like you said, you know, we get the dad who, you know, is in the hospital right now talking about, Oh yeah, you know, well, I, you know, my wife has postpartum or look, you know, um, <laughs> you know, my, my wife is doing fertility treatments and I don't, she's really kind of having a, you know, rough time, you know, um, you know, kind of dealing with the uncertainty of all this or look, just, or just to kind of, you know, I have got a son with autism, uh, or look recently gone through a divorce. I don't know what to do. Or, you know, just honestly to share the good times too. Like, look, you know, (laughs) I just had a wonderful day, you know, this, this, you know, life and fatherhood, as part of life, literally the life of dad, it, you know, it's, you know, we're celebrating fatherhood. We're celebrating life itself though. And, um, that's what life of dad is all about. Kind of appreciating and celebrating life in fatherhood for what it is, be that good, bad, or ugly, you know, it's all part of life and it's all part of fatherhood. And, you know, <laughs> So long as it doesn't kill us, it makes us stronger. What do they say? Absolutely. I mean, so, you know, yeah. so I mean, Could, that's 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 really what we're all about. You know. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree with that that more. As a matter of fact, and you know, you've it, to turn the volume up on your accomplishments at this point. I mean, you went up, went from the brink of you know the end. You made that decision, right or left, and you chose the correct way. You went you went forward. You went on to build this, and then at some point. It sounds like uh, your son Isaiah is is uh, autistic and uh, and has yes. ADHD. Now that is a that is a pretty common, um, I wouldn't say common, but it's more and more um, prevalent nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so so can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Because quite frankly, I don't know a whole lot about you know anything about autism and uh, ADHD. On the other hand, I think I may I may just have a portion of that. But uh, just inform <laughs> us, inform us, if you will, about what that means, what that is. I think we live in an AD, ADD culture. Yeah. <laughs> I think so like we're all, you know, perhaps beholden to a little bit of that. But um, and look, to be very specific, I'm, you know, I'm not the greatest spokesperson on behalf of any of this stuff. Look, I'm just a father uh-huh. um, who has a son who's being diagnosed with autism. Uh, he's high functioning autistic. Um, you know, he's got some, um, you know, some social calibration challenges, you know, to see him out kind of interacting with the world and interacting with peers. And, you know, I said he's going into middle school next year and uh, to kind of see him calculate and navigate the world um, is something that's slightly different than, you know, what would you, you would say is like the neurotypical kid. And um, I, look, the story of my life, you know, amidst working in the advertising industry and running a life of dad, you know, it, in, 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 in amidst the this day-to-day stuff of just being a, a parent and a father, um, add to that, you know, being, you know, the father of an autistic child, uh, who has, you know, kind of some, uh, some interesting kind of educational, uh, challenges and social challenges. Uh, you know, we surround ourselves with good tribe. You know, we've got a great team of, you know, behavioral therapists and speech and language pathologists and, and, you know, tutors and, and just like we've occupational therapists and, you know, we've got a wide range of um, professional supports around us 
um, you know, educational administrators and, you know, advisors and legal teams. <laughs> like it's, it's just a lot of um, we built a good team around us yeah. to help us manage and cope and deal with, you know, a lot of the day to day challenges of, of having a child, um, you know, with, um, you know, you know, these, these special, um, um, conditions. And, and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's just part of life. That's all I know. They you know that he's the only child I've got. And, um, it's interesting to see kind of like how he, um, uh, sees the world kind of a very like black and white manner. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you know, it was a very little gray area with that kid. He takes everything at face value. So, <laughs> So just communicating with him, you know, it's, it's, in, you know, in seeing how he, um, communicates, um, you know, receptively and, and also kind of proactively with the world and with his peers and how he interacts with people is just, um, kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, and just, you know, we hopefully surrounded ourselves with the right people. We got a great team to, to help us kind of navigate all this and, uh, you know, again, I'm just I'm just a dad, man. <laughs> Learning as I go. <laughs> well, you know, that's pretty I'm humble. No, I'm, no, I'm no expert in all this, you know. Yeah, that's you know? pretty humble. Uh, but yeah, I would I would say I would give you a lot more credit. But you know, the the common thread here is that you built another team. You built just like in your personal life, you know, just like through your struggles, uh, you know, marital struggles or, or life struggles and that sort of thing. You built another team, uh, and then this time mm-hmm. surrounding both yourself and your son. And then I think that's the important point to make is instead of choosing to do nothing or throw your hands up and you know say you know. I can't, I can't, I can't, you, mm-hmm. you chose to move forward and, and surround yourself with the right people and continue to tweak the recipe, if you will, uh, until you found something that works for not only yourself, but your son too. And so, you know, that's, yes. that I think I'd like to draw out of, uh, the, the, this particular conversation in re- with regard to autism and ADHD, uh, but any condition, any mm-hmm. situation, I think that the brotherhood, the, the tribe, you know, who you're connected to and how and, and your interactions with those folks is really the important point here. So thank mm-hmm. you for drawing that out. Anytime, man. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. You know, as far as uh, parenting goes, you know, you're, you're it sounded like you had a really tumultuous um, marriage. And, and it makes me wonder, how does, how does co-parenting work for you guys? Does she still live <laughs> across the country? How does that how does that work out? No. So, OK, so we have since somewhat come back together in a geographical sense, you know, certainly yeah. the, you know, we've, um, you know, divorce was always going to be, you know, <laughs> what ultimately kind of defined our relationship. But, um, I think co-parenting for us, you know, we, we live somewhat in the same community. We live here in the same County and, and, um, you know, we make it work with two different households and, you know, we split time 50, 50, um, you know, she's got, uh, Isaiah half the time, uh, at her place. And in fact, you know, legally he kind he lives with her, you know, that's his primary residence by law, I guess. Um, and then, you know, the other 50% of the time, you know, I've got a place of my own and, and, um, you know, he, he spends time with me also. So he, he is still learning, you know, how to kind of navigate that transition. He's doing it very well, mind you. That's good. Uh, you know, I think the autism somewhat, you know, actually inadvertently helps with that. You know, he's like a lot of, you know, you know, inadvertently a lot of the kind of adult and parental struggles that we think uh, we have. Our our son is somewhat oblivious to and couldn't care less about, but he <laughs> does. He is aware of you know kind of what's going on. Um, he's a very you know intelligent and uh, kid and has wisdom all his own. Um, in He's handling it like a champ, but basically he understands that, you know, um, you know, he, he lives with mommy half the time. He lives with daddy half the time. And there are some overlap, you know, um, where, you know, there are times where we do kind of do things all together. Um, that is more rare nowadays than it used to be. Um, but we try to keep the kind of respect and amicability intact. Um, which is sometimes rough. Um, it's not the most amicable <laughs> of all uh, co-parenting relationships. We have our moments of, of good and bad and ugly, um, but we try to keep the amicability intact. Yeah, that's super key. And I think that's the reason why he's adjusting well. I mean, I, that's my experience anyway, is that, 
once you get all the petty screaming bad feelings once you once you're able to process and move past that to move into mm -hmm. a amicable uh co-parenting space uh friendship if you want to call it that um i'm not mm -hmm. sure but there's still a relationship there of some sort you know it's not a it's not a marital relationship it's not a romantic relationship it's a relationship of okay you know what we're gonna we're gonna do our best we can for our our son and mm -hmm. you know we're not gonna let that in you know the past influence our present and and derail us and i think that's the reason why you know he is adjusting well and so again i wanted to you know tip of the hat to you sir good good work that's not I something that it's it. not something that a lot of people can do and i'm sure you see that a lot as a matter of fact i know i, I appreciate that um, and I, I think ultimately, you know, I respect her as a mother. She's yeah. a great mother. That's key. You know, she, she does so much for, for Isaiah and I, I owe her the utmost of respect for that. Um, and I wish her well in life. That's, that's, I think, you know, we've been through a lot and ultimately what I would love to see, you know, for both of us, you know, just kind of move on and, you know. She, you know, Isaiah's going to spend time with her half the time, spend time with me half the time. And, you know, I want her to be happy yeah. in all facets of her life, career related, you know, uh, my gosh, intimately related, you know, like, I, you know, we, you know, in the divorce, you know, you got to let go and move on. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wish her all the happiness and success and freedom in the world. Um, <laughs> And I think, I think friendship and amicability is excellent. And I also think boundaries are important too. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. That's because ultimately, you know, like, look, I'm I'm moving on too. You know, and yeah. and I wish myself the same level of happiness and success and 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 flourishing kind of you know and, and vibrant kind of uh, love life that I wish her. And yeah. and so look. <laughs> As much as I wish her happiness and success and all these wonderful, beautiful things, I do want us both to separate and move on. Yes. And yeah. So, 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 so it's an interesting balance, like co-parenting, you know, cause the co meaning like, look, you've got to co-operate. Yeah. Um, but you also have to operate disparately and separately too. Yeah. Um, so that, that's an interesting kind of balance that I found, uh, especially being kind of newly divorced, um, and, you know, <laughs> navigating dating and, and all the relationships and, you know, all the newness that, you know, uh, that I'm, I'm finding myself in, you know, reconciling co-parenting with boundary, reconciling separateness with togetherness. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think all of your listeners that we read dads can kind of understand that. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, there's, I know myself, I was in this camp too early on. I think we all are. It was just that animosity and, Oh, and I'm angry. And, you know, I, yep. I, I need to, I need to somebody else to, to inflict this anger on somebody else. And of course, you know, that's what we end up doing, right? We incite, we push those buttons and then there's an argument and this, that, and the other thing for somebody who's in that place and they want to get to this, I'm going to just go ahead and say it Zen like position you mm -hmm. found yourself in because I mean, yeah. for a lot of guys, it's just almost impossible. It's dreamland, but it, mm -hmm. I know you can realize it. If they're in point a and they're, they're setting their sights to where you are currently, what is your mm -hmm. best advice for them to take the steps forward? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know we did a whole show about this, you and I and Phil, and that was great, by the way. Thank you so much for having me on the live show. But in, can you give us uh, like a couple of pointers? A way to keep your Zen like quality about you? Yeah. Well, to go from, <laughs> to go from arguing parents to, you know, functioning co-parents. Mm, my word. Because <laughs> look, like I'm not perfect. Well, no, like, but, but you figured out a way for you to do it, right? So if somebody can take one or two things away and say, maybe I can try this and it works for them. I mean, that, that's, that's really, that's what I want to see for other people too. And I, I'm sure you do as well. I would say, you know, cleaning up my life, you know, cause my life was a wreck. Yeah. You know, I was losing everything around me, letting myself go, letting everything else around me literally go. And, um, you know, I, I was just treating myself like crap. So yeah, my solution is treat myself better yeah. than crap. <laughs> Funny, I feel like Peter Shankman, you know, those of your listeners out there know Peter Shankman, you know, 
<laughs> found founder of a help a reporter out in an awesome you know world renowned speaker uh-huh. you know it's like treat treat people better than crap <laughs> you know you kind of have to apply that to yourself <laughs> yeah you, know, you don't look you don't have to like move mountains you don't have to like you know be excellent you know at everything but if you could just be good <laughs> like you know like look i was eating a bunch of junk food and just treating myself like crap and look you don't get any worse than like being on the brink of suicide but i think you know to the, the, what i found is kind of the way i've reached kind of a good state of mind is to treat myself better. I've cleaned up a lot of my diet. Look, I'm, you know, I was eating Big Macs and, you know, chicken nuggets like back in, you know, the, you know, late, you know, like two around 2008 when my stuff was hitting the fan. Now I'm like, you know, vegetarian. I eat, you know, a lot more like clean whole food. Um, just wake up every day. You know, my work life balance is just much better now. Yeah. You know, I've got a really good career. Um, that I really don't even remember seeking that much. Um, in hindsight, it, it feels like it, it kind of like fell in my lap um, because it had all oh, unfolded kind of naturally, kind of just based on um, getting up out of bed in the morning and as opposed to just kind of like rushing off to do something with the, like check the email and check the phone and like, you know, respond to this, like all these like demanding challenges. Like, yeah. I, look, I say my peace and my quiet, like that's, you know, get good sleep, eat well, you know, ease into the day as opposed to like, you know, waking up and it's like, you know, having an alarm clock being like, you know, the, it almost like, you know, you're off to the races and like having the gun, like, you know, trigger you off to this like kind of crazy, hectic, frenetic life. Um, my life is much more just kind of easy going and slow paced. And I safeguard that. And then once, you know, once I feel like I've reached, you know, kind of maintain my, my calm and composure oh. for the day, then I'll deal with life's challenges and stresses I like, really, that. like look it's like it's you know i think you said at the top of the show like look how do you do it all like it, look yeah like let's be very clear i have a lot of stuff to do in my <laughs> life you know i work an advertising job i'm yeah. running like a dad you know in the technical sense and i i i, I you know co-parent in a tumultuous relationship with you know an autistic you know child with adhd and also trying to navigate you know you know new relationships in my life, you know, yeah. post divorce yeah. and just, yeah, it's a lot. And, but look, I don't, I don't have to be all things to all people. Like, again, like I, I think I even said it earlier in the show, like, like so long as I've done my best, I have nothing to stress about. Like, you know, it, you know, whatever remains on the queue or on the, the plate, you know, it can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> like, I love you know, it. But I love this. My, my, peace my calm my equanimity my composure my sleep patterns my good diet like you, look you got to treat yourself well before you can treat anybody else well like you gotta you gotta you know make sure you're whole and making sh- make sure you're you've got peace of mind before you can affect anybody else in a positive way so my thing is like before i step out into the world before i'm gonna tackle anything career related or parenting related Make sure I can wake up out of bed every morning and have peace and calm in my day. Be a good diet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, treat yourself yeah. well, man. Yeah. Well, food is fuel and medicine, and I agree with that. Man, you just – like the elements of Zen here, according to Ryan Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen <laughs> – this is yeah. this is literally gold. Like we're not talking okay. about other people. We're not talking about you know your relationships with your children or you know extra merit. Not extra. Sorry, not extra merit. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, addition to your former marriage. I, I don't know your current your current relationships. Whatever that is, you know this is a relationship with yourself. And I, you nailed it. I don't think in any of my episodes so far somebody has gone this far as to say like just. Just, you know, work on you, work on you for a while, be happy with you, put those stresses aside, start your day in a place of calm. And in your case, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to coin this phrase this is Ryan Hamilton Zen. That's, that should be a hashtag right there. I Ryan appreciate Hamilton that, man. Zen. I mean, that's, it's, like, it's beauty. Like, look, I, I appreciate it, man. I, it's, but it's like, you know, put, put, make no mistake about it. I mean, I crush it. Like, get me in front of a computer, get me in front of a laptop, go do my work. 
you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I've got a limited amount of time in my life in which I can work and parent and be a, a, a family man as I, I see fit. And, you know, it's all about the quality that you bring to that time. Like, you know, um, you, you know, um, if time is limited, then I've got to bring my best self to that limited time. Boom. And, 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 and the only way I'm going to do that is by, you know, making sure my mind's right, making sure my, my body's right and my spirit's right. And when that time is right, when I elect that time, you know, nothing's going to trigger me to like be di- like thrown into that time in a friend, you know, kind of frenetic manner. Like I don't, I don't like being, you know, like thrown around with, you know, uh, and, and like forced to do anything. You know, it's my decision to do anything in life, Lit- you know, literally live life itself. Like that's a decision, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to do anything in life. You know, I don't have to go to my job in the advertising field. You know, I could quit life at dad tomorrow. I don't have to do anything. You don't even have to live life itself, but I choose to do it and I choose to do it on my terms. And when it's time that I decide that I'm going to show up to whatever I decide to do, be it work or side work or parent parenting, you know, do it on my terms and according to the peace and calm that I've, I've elected for myself for that day. And yeah, you know, you know, so you got, you can't, I mean, a lot of people are just like reactive in life. You got to be kind of the center of it all. You got to be, you know, you know, almost like the force that others have to reckon with <laughs> rather than being like subjected to the force that forces of nature, just like tossing you around again, like you got to be the rock. Yeah. Instead of like a rock man nice you know? yeah you know? i love it we started with it and we came right back to it ryan i yeah i appreciate all of these words of advice i mean there's been so many mic drop moments here you know this, throughout the course of this conversation and and as always i've got a ton of other things that i would love to talk to you about but I, you know i respect sure. your time um and i and i want i just i guess i guess i feel inundated at this point it's like wow you know, you kind of you kind of blew up my mind a little bit with all these things I need to come home and process with. So I tell you what, why don't we why don't we um, wrap it up with one two more questions? I got two more questions for you, uh, and then and then you could tell us about how we can get in touch with you and how to support your efforts, what you're doing, what life of dad, etc. Um, sure. So first first off, um, I would like to know that if what what techniques or strategies. We just kind of went over that one. Sorry, we went that that one before. So I got one question. It's if you could teleport back to that moment where you were in the bomb, right? Mm -hmm. Your person today goes back to that person then. What book, advice, or resource would you give that person? Hmm. My gosh. Well, the funny thing is um, the books and resources that I would recommend to that person, I I kind of uh, (laughs) – <laughs> your listener's going to crack up at this, but <laughs> so I think at one of my low points, dude, I was broke. I was freaking broke. And, you know, you know, I was drinking and just gambling and losing money. And, you know, I came home in a really, really deep depression one night after just losing a bunch of money. And I was like, what, you know, like, look, I, I've, I've completely failed in my life. And at the low point, um, I did have an iPhone with little, you know, <laughs> Wi-Fi service, little data plan or whatever. And I got on YouTube and I was like, what's going to, what's going to, like, what, what positive video can I watch? Because, like, dude, I need something. I need something positive to just, like, feed my brain. So, dude, I would watch Les Brown videos. Les Brown. Les Brown videos. Motivational speaker just speaks about, you know, living life and fulfilling your dreams and, you know, living the life you want. And I don't know, something just kind of got triggered in my brain at that point. I think of that low, low point. And like I said, I, I just, I was down and out. I was completely hopeless. And, uh, something in my right mind, whatever was left of it kind of prompted me to <laughs> watch motivational, less Brown videos. And, uh, I think that, uh, kind of saved my life. So, uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> to people going through the struggle, I guess myself included, you know, less Brown videos, 
on YouTube. Something something that speaks to you. Oh no, Google, that's Google Les Brown on YouTube. And, <laughs> you know, you'll have a shot. Man. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I did the same thing. Uh, you know, and I still do it occasionally. You know, that that external motivation, especially when you're in that that place, you know, where you're just like, ah, you know, I just I don't have the energy to do anything new. I don't want to fail, and this and the other thing. It's just like, I don't know what it is because I watch those too. Not specifically mm-hmm. Les Brown until now. But uh, I've, I listen to the motivational videos and it's just like I listen to other people say, because, you know, they come these people come from a place of having been through extreme adversity. At least yeah. most of them do. And you're like, mm-hmm. you know what? I know this guy. He, you know, he survived as a quadriplegic. And this guy, you know, this guy over here, you know, literally lost everything. And, you know, maybe he lost a family member or, you know, th- there's these incredible stories of struggle. Like this guy was a foster kid and kicked around in a gang and in prison mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, like there's those there's those real struggle stories. And you get to look at yourself like, A, I, maybe I'm not as bad off as I thought. And B, if that person could do it, so can I. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, you know, a a lot of, you know, kind of the successful, quote unquote, successful, you know, people that you see out in the world. And and they always talk about, you know, like the the 20 year overnight success story. (laughs) Like, yeah, look, like nobody did this overnight. It never happens overnight. Oh, my gosh. Look, all the, you know, millionaires, billionaires, you know, not even financially, but just like, you know, the people who've lived their dreams and affected humanity in a positive way. Like, look, they. That was wrought with um with struggle. Here again, you know, like look, they they didn't start off at the top. They started off at the very bottom and had to work up from a place of humility and let that stuff flourish in their life. And uh, you know, it took time for that. So yeah. Yeah. I like <laughs> yeah. to say and, that and, 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 and yeah, look, like we said, they they share their stuff on YouTube and my gosh, yeah, we we live in such a kind of information rich world like anything yeah. you want to google it's like out there so yeah just go out and google <laughs> whatever you think will make your life better it's yeah. out there use, you know? use those free moments and we all have them you know instead of going to facebook or whatever or going to and, and i'll surf youtube i get i get chucked down the rabbit hole at youtube even but i mean really stay conscious about your free time and really start using that free time to better yourself and what i'd like to say is that you know Overnight success doesn't happen, but success happens as an accumulation of changes from one day to the next. And that's exactly what yep. you're talking about here. Absolutely. You awesome. know, success is success is what do they say? The journey, not the destination. It's like, you know, the success was the decision to, you know, start eating vegetables that day. Yeah. As opposed to a freaking Big Mac. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that, that, you know, that's I guess when, you know, success happened in my life. It's when, you know, I started to make more successful decisions and um, non-detrimental ones like considering suicide. And uh, yeah, I mean, it really kind of boils down to moments and decisions we make in them. Love it. Love it. You know, let's uh, I'd love to go on. Uh, but yeah. I tell you what, let's, let's let the audience know how, how to help you, how to serve you. How do we get in contact with you? What can we do to help you, my friend? Um, I, look, I, it's interesting. I, I'm not, I don't really seek help, you know, but I appreciate it. It's like, I think, um, you know, I think I'm here to help. And I think, um, you know, definitely go check out life of dad. You know, we can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all the, the rest of them, you know, go search for life of dad. Um, and then of course, you know, we have the site life of And, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I hope you find uh, value where, you know, in, when you get there. It would yeah. be impossible not to. I know you guys are in a lot of different avenues. I've been fortunate enough to be invited on a couple of, of your different uh, media streams, and uh, for, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that. So I wanted to thank you in a public setting for allowing me to do that, share my story, and uh, be part of that as well. So guys, listen up. I'll put uh, a link to the Life of Dad podcast and, and, and all of the channels on the show notes. And you can, of course, get to the show notes by using the quick links for you iTunes users out there. But uh, never fear. Go, go hit the show notes up at uh, www.weraddads.com slash Ryan Hamilton. Common spelling. So uh, with that, I think we're going to close up here. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today. And, and every conversation is just, it's always enlightening. So I really want to keep this going. No, I appreciate that, Walter. I really appreciate uh, you know what you're doing there at, at We Rad Dads. And uh, 
my gosh, you know, <laughs> I wish you had existed back when I was really, you know, about a decade or so when I was going through my pain and struggle, man. But um, I'm glad you exist now. And wow. I, I love what you're doing, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, and likewise, right back at you at least tenfold. So uh, keep at it and uh, looking forward to the future, my friend. Appreciate it, man. All right. Have a good one. You too. Oh, welcome back, Rad Dads. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. And I really enjoyed talking to Ryan Hamilton. And I got to say, I, I apologize. I apologize that it has literally taken me this long to get that episode out. And there was a lot of reasons for it. Obviously, Ryan is a wealth of information. And I, I hung on to it. I hung on to it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, whew, it's hot in here. I'm, unbutt- I'm, I'm zippi- unzipping my, uh, my vest here for those of you on the Facebook Live, watching this Facebook Live from the group, the We Rad Dads group. Um, for those of you listening, guys, what are you waiting for? Like, okay, so you're a little intimidated. Maybe you're embarrassed or whatever. But guess what? We all were at one point. Head on over to the We Rad Dads Facebook group. Uh, request to join and answer the question. Those, that's it. That's the criteria. Those are the three things you need to do. Um, I'm not going to give you the URL. Go over to Facebook. If you don't know how to work the search bar, you've got bigger problems. Uh, but, if, you know, if, if that doesn't work for you, if you want to contact me directly, I'm always available. Walter at WeRadDads.com. And I said this in the intro, guys. I would appreciate if you're inclined to sign up with Audible and get a free book. That's right. A free book. If you want a free book, go over to audibletrial.com slash we rad dads. That's our affiliate link. You know, we rad dads, or in this case, this rad dad would appreciate uh, just a little bit of affiliate income. It's not going to ch- cost you any more. They're not going to charge you any more. And they just take a percentage of what they would normally take and pocket themselves. And they give it to us, us, we rad dads. This stuff isn't free. Like this microphone you're seeing livers, uh, not free. Uh, neither is my time. But I digress. This isn't about being paid. This is about you getting the resources you want. So if you want a free 30-day trial to audible.com, head on over to audibletrial.com slash we read dads. Okay, guys, got it. Good. Now, meat and potatoes. Why did I hang on to this interview for as long as I did? I'll tell you. Uh, I was scared. And uh, at that point last year, I, I was falling into another bomb crater. That's what's what happened. I mean, legitimate guys, I fell into another bomb crater and I tried to weather it like it wasn't happening. And of all people for that to happen to, uh, it was highly embarrassing. It was embarrassing for me. And, and that show's coming. Actually, I got to have a, a really awesome uh, guest host for that show. Um, it, it's going to be a, a total blast. So, uh, Mehdi. Thank you for joining me, sir. I uh, appreciate it. We got a, we got somebody watching in the Facebook Live. Uh, give you a shout out here. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, uh, but thanks for joining us. I was talking about why I hung on to this interview with uh, with Ryan Hamilton, and the bottom line is, um, I saw a couple things. First of all, I fell into a bomb crater, and I said something at the beginning here, and Ryan actually drew it out of me a little bit. He, he, he said, you know, that, that's right. And what I said is solid as a rock. Guys, when I said that, I knew at that point I wasn't solid as a rock. Um, and to be honest with you, since uh, I have been very much less than solid, uh, especially through my second bomb crater this last year, um, and it really led me to question my own integrity. It really led me to question why I was doing this show. And if I was willing to say things that weren't exactly true to you guys, who am I? What am I doing here? And, and what's it all worth? You know, I really started questioning myself. I was talking about integrity in my episode zero and, and what that is. And at that moment, I lost my integrity. And I wanted to call myself out to you guys, uh, you listeners, you guys who are putting yourselves out there to be part of the We Rad Dads Facebook group, to be part of the conversation. Those of you who have emailed me, which I highly appreciate, Walter at WeRadDads.com. Um, and those of you who had had contact with me in other ways, you PM me on on Facebook and that sort of thing. Guys, when I said solid as a rock, I knew it wasn't the case. Uh, and and I know that Ryan grabbed onto that and it was it was important. It's important to be solid as a rock, but we know that we're kind of tumbling. Right now we're tumbling and we want to be solid as a rock. There's nothing wrong with that. 
So guys, I wanted to call myself out on that front. And two, uh, I didn't have, I was losing it. I was, I was absolutely losing it. I had that point just gotten my tax returns back and, uh, reality hit me. Reality hit me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not cruising along, uh, without my financial burdens and neither are you. And, uh, I knew I couldn't, I couldn't continue to, to bring on guests every single week. Like I'd had to that point, it was getting it to a critical point. And I realized that I had to make a stand for my family. In this case, my son and myself, I knew if I couldn't take care of myself first, then I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would have happened. Um, but I had to stop for my own, for my own sake and take care of myself. Guys, it's important to take care of yourselves. Do what is necessary, not always what is expected. Now, now there's, there's some silver linings on that one, right? Apply this to your situation carefully. In this case, as much as I wanted to be of service to the We Rad Dads community, to build it further, to continue what I was doing, I needed to stop. I mean, that's all there is to it. And the reason I hung on to this episode, because it was the last one, it was the last one I had at that point. And I was afraid, I was afraid that once I let this last one go, my, my chamber was empty and I'd have nothing. The reality is you create, I'm, I'm going to be able to create more interviews. I can reach out to almost anybody at this point. Uh, I lost my confidence because of my second bomb crater. Again, something I'm going to talk about later, but it was something that I hope I'm making a little bit of sense here. I... <sighs> I lost, I lost my momentum and I recognize now that it's not about how many episodes you have banked away. In fact, it's not even about how much money you have in the bank. It's about your belief in your potential. And the reason I hesitated is because I hesitate. I, I, I just, I didn't believe in myself to be honest with you. My confidence has been shot. Um, it's pretty clear. I can, I can talk to anybody. I can, I can do that. At that point, going through my second bomb crater, I had lost confidence in myself. And so first I wanted to apologize to you for, for that guys, I'm rambling. I'm, I'm hearing myself rambling, but it's important for me to get this, this point home to you guys. So I'll try and wrap it up here real quick. Uh, special thanks to Ryan Hamilton for coming on the show and, uh, and having a year old episode, uh, come out. So, sir, we really appreciate you. Guys, I wanted to come out to you guys, let you know what was happening and why it was happening. The answers are on the way and so are more episodes. I have to get this one out there. You know, it's full of gems, but I need to get out there so you guys can hear it. So you guys can take away the, the nuggets and, uh, and we can all move forward. Uh, I've got more guests coming. And so now let's do this. Uh, game on 2018 new episodes on their way. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Be good to yourselves. Be honest with yourselves. And if you need help for crying out loud, reach out. Guys, we're here. We Rad Dads Facebook group, audibletrial.com slash We Rad Dads. Guys, continue to make your tomorrows better than your yesterday. Stay up, stay connected, and stay rad, dads. Anthony Hayes just logged on. Anthony, signing out. Take care, buddy. Well, that's it for this episode of We Rad Dads. I sincerely thank you for joining us. Don't forget to look us up at www.weraddads.com. There you can find links to our Facebook page and Twitter account. Got a question or comment? It may be featured. Email me, Walter, at weraddads.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for joining us. And remember, stay up, stay connected, and stay rad, dads. Do it one more time. Goodbye. How about, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. How about, hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back.